This video is sponsored by RAID Shadow Legends. Bring a true console level experience to your phone with RAID. I've been playing RAID for years, and I love the constant updates and their latest might be my favorite yet. Say hello to the new legendary champion from the High Elves faction, Deliana. Anyone can add her to their roster, even brand new players. But you have to act right now since RAID's currently running a special Deliana Chase event. All you have to do is log in and play RAID for 7 days between now and July 28th, and you'll get Deliana for free. And for all the new players, enter promo code MYDELIANA to get 50 XP brews to instantly get her to max level 50, as well as a ton of silver. There's tons of other new stuff in Raid 2, like an all-new champion skin for the oversized Hammer Queen herself, Trunda Guilt Mallet. So what are you waiting for? Click my link in the description or scan my QR code to get bonuses worth $30, including a free epic champion Ina, 200,000 silver, 1 energy refill, 1 XP boost, and 1 ancient shard. So download Raid now, and I'll see you in the game. The Allies are winning in Europe, and the end of the war is finally in sight. Suddenly, though, as British and American forces cross the German border, they come face to face with a 1,000-ton beast. The gunner that first spots one of those behemoths thinks he's seeing an optical illusion. He doesn't survive to figure out he's wrong, as the mechanical monster fires its massive cannon and tears his tank in two. What follows is a bloodbath of epic proportions as titanic Nazi war machines tear through the hordes of Allied troops. This is the 1,000-ton German mega-tank, Land Cruiser P-1000 Rata, and there is no stopping it. Luckily, this gigantic tank would never see the light of day. It's scary to imagine what would have happened if Hitler and the Nazis had made it work, but the fact that precious resources were needed elsewhere to defend against Allied forces and the sheer magnitude of the project, the Rata was never built. That being said, the Land Cruiser P-1000 Rata has an incredibly interesting history, especially when you consider how massive the tank was actually supposed to be. It would have been capable of carrying numerous turrets and anti-aircraft guns. Hitler's dream was to make the Rata into a battleship that moved across the land, hence the name Land Cruiser. The main armament was even supposed to come off of an actual battleship, although it would need slight modifications. Being the biggest and heaviest tank ever built came with all sorts of problems, but Hitler was willing to overcome all of them to see this monstrosity of a tank become a reality. It was 1941 when the first ideas for the Land Cruiser P-1000 Rata came about. German researchers were given orders to conduct a survey on Soviet heavy tanks and the best way to fight against them. The company that was in charge of the survey was a munitions and weapons company called Krupp. This project ended up being a source of inspiration for Nazi engineers, as it would end up leading to the Panzer VIII Maus super heavy tank being built. This tank was the precursor to the Rata. The man in charge of the study was Edvard Grotta, who was the director of Krupp at the time. Grotta had previously been a special officer in charge of submarine construction for the Nazi party. He used his background in naval construction along with the survey conducted on Soviet tanks to come up with the design for the Landcruiser P-1000 Rata. On June 23, 1942, Edward Grotta met with Adolf Hitler and other high-ranking members of the Nazi party. He was absolutely giddy about the plans for a new superweapon that he held in his hands. He pulled out the concept drawings for the Rata and began spewing out his ideas on how it would work and how it would essentially be a battleship that can move across a war zone destroying every allied force in its path. The land cruiser would be unstoppable, and the enemy would cower at its greatness. Hitler loved the idea and wanted one built as soon as possible, but as Grotta talked more about the tank specifications, other members of the Nazi party became concerned with the amount of resources that would need to be diverted from the production of other vehicles and weapons to complete the project. But as Grotta talked on and on about how powerful the Land Cruiser P-1000 would be, Hitler couldn't help but dream about the look on his enemies' faces as they gazed upon his massive tank. Edward Grotta explained that the main cannon would be a 28cm SKC-34 naval gun turret, which could be taken from a Scharnhorst-class battleship. Originally, this turret had three cannons, but one would be removed to improve stability and allow for more munitions to be stored aboard the Rata. It would also reduce the weight of the already incredibly heavy tank by around 50 tons. The main armament would be fitted onto the main body of the tank using a 360-degree track, which would allow it to turn and fire in any direction. It could shoot both armor-piercing rounds or high-explosive rounds. Since these shells were designed for naval warfare, they could pack a serious punch and would obliterate any tanks, buildings, or enemy soldiers they hit. The Land Cruiser's biggest threat didn't come from Allied tanks but from their aircraft. This led to the future designs of the Land Cruiser P-1000 Rata to include a 128mm anti-tank gun, along with eight 20mm Flak 38 anti-aircraft guns on the hull of the tank 
to deal with airborne attacks. To supplement the main cannons, the tank was also equipped with two 15mm Mauser MG-151-15 autocannons to fire at ground-based targets. The Land Cruiser P-1000 Ratha was so huge that its design also included a vehicle bay that could house two BMW R12 motorcycles for scouting missions. Since the Land Cruiser itself would not move very fast, even in the best of terrain, the crew needed to have the ability to scout ahead and see what was coming. Like a naval ship, it would also have an infirmary and self-contained lavatory system on board. The tank would also have bunk rooms for the crew and numerous storage areas for supplies and extra ammunition. Basically, everything the crew would need to live and fight would be on board. The armor across the entire tank would almost be 10 inches thick to protect the humongous investment put into the tank and the crew that was inside. All in all, the armor would weigh around 200 tons. The guns and cannons would add an additional 300 tons to the overall weight of the Rata. Just the shell of the Land Cruiser would be 500 tons, and that was before adding tracks, engines, ammunition, supplies, and crew. The blueprint showed that the Land Cruiser would end up being around 128 feet long from the tip of the naval guns to the back of the tank, 36 feet high and 46 feet wide. With all this weight and the enormous size of the tank, Hitler and his advisors had some questions about how the whole thing would actually move, but Edward Grota had an answer for that as well. The Rata would include six heavy-duty tracks that would help distribute the weight of the tank evenly. They would each be 4 feet wide and 69 feet long. This would allow the Land Cruiser to traverse difficult terrain, which would be key if the tank was ever going to make it to battle. A 1,000-ton tank could easily get stuck in muddy or rocky areas, but if the tracks worked according to plan, the Land Cruiser would be able to roll right over anything that stood in its path. However, a main concern for everyone who saw the initial plans of the Rata was that even with the tracks, the weight of the tank would cause the moving fortress to sink deep into even the most solid ground. Wheels were out of the question, as they would need to be so gigantic the whole vehicle would be unstable. Tracks were needed to cross rivers, ditches, and forested areas because they gave the tank better weight distribution and grip on difficult terrain. The clearance from the ground to the underside of the Rata would be about 6.6 .6 feet. This was hypothesized to be tall enough to allow for it to ford most rivers with ease. Since the Land Cruiser was so heavy, it couldn't be loaded onto boats, as its weight would sink both vessels. And there were no bridges large or strong enough for the Rata to travel across. This meant that once the tank was in the field, it would need to be able to navigate any terrain it came across on its own. Now that Grota had sold his design to Hitler, who could barely contain his excitement over the idea, he needed to explain how this moving fortress would actually move. Grota and his team believed that two man V-12 Z-32 44 24-cylinder marine diesel engines could do the trick. The engines were used to propel U-boats through the oceans, so they would be ideal candidates for the Land Cruiser. Each engine could produce around 8,400 horsepower. The only problem would be that if one of the engines broke, the Land Cruiser was pretty much stuck where it was. This would make the Land Cruiser a sitting duck if Allied forces surrounded it and bombarded the tank from the ground or the air. The other option was to equip the tank with eight Daimler-Benz MB501 20-cylinder marine diesel engines. Each of these engines could produce around 2,000 horsepower, which would provide a little less power than the man engines. However, since there were eight of them, the tank could probably still move even if one or two went offline. It doesn't seem a final decision was ever made on what type of engine would be best for this new Wunderwaffe. Both engine options would require enormous amounts of diesel to move the Rata. It's estimated that the tank would go through a gallon of fuel a minute running at full power, which would only move the Land Cruiser around 25 miles per hour. Considering that Hitler's hopes and dreams hinged on the Rata crushing his enemies across Europe, the tank would require an almost unfathomable amount of diesel to meet his goals. Other tanks and military vehicles were transported long distances by railway, but the Rata was too large to fit through tunnels and there was no train large enough to carry it. At the time the Land Cruiser concept was brought to Adolf Hitler, Germany was already having problems with its supply lines. Getting oil out of the Middle East was becoming harder and harder as Italian forces were falling apart and the British were holding their own in the region. This problem was exasperated by the United States joining the war. The Nazis desperately needed more oil to keep their war machine running, and if the Rata was ever going to become a reality, it'd need a lot more of this vital resource. The decision was made to invade the Soviet Union to try to gain more resources, not so the land cruiser could be built, but so the Nazis could continue fighting the war. This decision would eventually lead to the Nazis' downfall and the end of the war in Europe. Regardless of the type of engines the tank was fitted with, the exhaust system would have been the same. All engines would be provided with snorkels similar to those used on German U-boats. Their connections between the submarine technology and the Land Cruiser were clearly Edward Grote using what he already knew 
and then transferring it to the weapon of his dreams. The snorkels would be constructed in a way that oxygen could still reach the Rathas engines even when the tank was traveling through deeper waters. The last thing the Nazis would want was their 1,000-ton tank stuck in a river with no power as the entire vessel began to fill up with water. One of the reasons Hitler might have been so open to the idea of the Land Cruiser was because he already loved another giant tank design called the Mouse. The original design was created by Ferdinand Porsche, the same gentleman responsible for creating fast sports cars and the People's Car, better known as Volkswagens. But the Mouse was not a car, it was actually the heaviest fully enclosed tank ever made. It ended up weighing around 200 tons. The Mouse was about 33 and a half feet long, which was twice as long as the Panzer III tank that had brought the Nazis success throughout the war. The mouse was 12 feet high and had armor thicker than any naval ship at the time. Hitler was adamant that the tank be equipped with a 128mm Pac-44 Krupp Panzerabwehrkanone anti-tank cannon. Later, designs also included a coaxial 75mm gun to the main turret, a 7.92mm MG-34 machine gun atop the turret, and an MG-151 20 20mm anti-aircraft gun to defend the tank. Hitler's dream was to make the Land Cruiser the big brother to the mouse, which is why it was given the name Rata. The Panzer VIII mouse had one huge thing going for it that the Rata didn't though, it was actually built. Only two were ever completed, and of the two, only one of them made it to the battlefield before the end of the war. The mouse and the Rata would have had very similar problems that made these tanks pretty much useless when it came to fighting in a battle. What were the biggest problems for a 1,000-ton tank? As 1943 progressed, the Nazis just couldn't afford to commit the amount of resources and manpower needed to build the Rata. Nazi leadership could not justify trying to construct the behemoth of a tank when it would end up being so impractical even if the Fuhrer wanted it to be a reality. Military strategists examined the Rata and determined that it could likely have been built, but it would not end up being the dream weapon that Grotha and Hitler had imagined. Its 1,000-ton weight meant it would pulverize any roads it drove across. Maybe this wouldn't be a big deal for the Rata itself, but it would make everyone else's lives miserable. Other Germans who used the roads regularly for supply runs or just to move around the country would have had to travel across the jagged remains of concrete that the Rata left behind. As mentioned before, the size and weight of the Rata also meant it wouldn't be able to use bridges or trains, so deploying the tank anywhere quickly wasn't a possibility which is kind of a problem during wartime. The size of the tank would also make it an easy target for Allied bombers. Even though the Rata would be equipped with anti-air guns, there just wouldn't be enough firepower to stop multiple bombers from targeting the tank and managing at least a few direct hits during a run. The Rata's armor was thick, but multiple bombs slamming into the hull at the same time would be enough to at least damage some of its more vital components such as the engines or the tracks. After about a year of planning and crunching the numbers to see if the Land Cruiser Rata could somehow be built, Hitler's Minister of Armaments and War Production, Albert Speer, finally put an end to the madness. He explained that Nazi Germany was at a crossroads and they needed to focus their resources on weapons that had already been proven to be effective such as the Panzer IV. However, the craziest part is that Grota and his team at Krupp had already started designing an even bigger tank. They'd taken the idea for the Rata and implemented a new weapon system. The idea was if they could build a 1,000-ton tank, then adding another 500 tons to it couldn't be all that hard. The team designed a second Land Cruiser and named it the Monster. Instead of using the 28cm SKC-34 naval gun turret, the P-1500 would use a more powerful weapon that Krupp had already designed. The Monster would be fitted with a modified version of the heavy Gustav 80cm railway gun. This was another massive weapon that just wasn't practical. It had been used once at the Siege of Sevastopol, where it took 4,000 men about five weeks to get the gun into firing position. After the heavy Gustav was in position, it required another 500 men to fire it. The siege lasted about a month and the heavy Gustav fired 47 rounds. The problem was that it had worn out its original barrel. The massive cannon needed to be shipped back to the Krupp factory in Germany to be refitted with a new barrel. This would be the only time the heavy Gustav would see battle as the massive cannon was impractical and abandoned by the Nazi military. It was dismantled and its pieces spread throughout the factory to keep the incoming Soviets from using the Nazis' own gigantic cannon against them. Yet, the planners of the monster didn't see the heavy Gustav as just a useless cannon. They were convinced that by incorporating the heavy Gustav onto the Land Cruiser P-1500 monster, all the problems with the original weapon could be solved. It would be more versatile and could travel wherever it was needed without the necessity of train tracks. Obviously, it would be incredibly slow and an easy target, but that didn't seem to concern Nazi engineers when they were designing the Wunderwaffe for the Führer. However, Speer would have none of it. 
When Hitler was preoccupied with news of his forces being defeated across Europe, Speer cancelled all projects related to the Land Cruiser, as well as the construction of any more Maus tanks. Unlike others in the Nazi party, he wasn't captivated by the dreams of gigantic weapons that may or may not have been practical. He was focused on building tanks and weapons that could possibly turn the war back in the Nazis' favor. Luckily, no matter what Speer did, the Nazis had already made too many mistakes and would not be able to recover. There is one terrifying thought, though, that we want to leave you with. What if Edward Grote had come up with the idea of the Land Cruiser P-1000 Rata earlier? Could it have affected the outcome of the war? This huge tank would most certainly be a formidable machine to go up against in battle, but perhaps it would have been an even more dangerous psychological impact. The heavy Gustav was originally supposed to be constructed to aid in the demolition of French fortifications when the Nazis' invasion commenced. However, the Nazis found that capturing France was easier than they anticipated, and the invasion was complete before the heavy Gustav was in its testing phase. Likewise, World War II had been raging for a few years before the Rata was brought to Hitler's attention, which did not allow enough time for him to ever see this nightmare of a tank become reality. But what if those superweapons had been built before the start of World War II? The date is September 1, 1939. Adolf Hitler did the unthinkable and invaded Poland. The rest of Europe braces for what will inevitably be an all-out war. As reconnaissance planes fly over the borders of Germany, they spot gigantic moving structures from the sky. The crew notes that they didn't even need binoculars to spot these monstrosities, as they were so large that they could be seen from cruising altitude. What the Allied recon pilots have witnessed is a platoon of Land Cruiser P-1000 Ratas moving toward the French border. In this unthinkable imaginary scenario, the idea for the Land Cruiser was developed right when Hitler came to power, and its construction started almost immediately. The massive tanks are slow moving, but it seems as if nothing can stand in their way. France quickly falls with minimal casualties to Nazi forces. With the land cruisers on the battlefield, the German forces move from town to town and decimate any resistance by rolling the Ratas right into the middle of the fight. Nazi soldiers wait patiently in the bellies of the beasts until the battle is over, and then enter French towns and cities to round up anyone who's left alive. Germany begins fighting land battles as if they were naval battles. They deploy their land cruisers across Europe with panzer tanks as support. When Allied forces try to reach the mainland on D-Day, they're greeted by a land cruiser P-1000 Rata on the beach of Normandy. Their bullets do nothing to its thick armor, and the main cannons are able to fire at the ships that sit offshore, causing them to retreat. In the Soviet Union, the Rata platoons are slowly making progress through the harsh Russian landscape. Luckily for the Nazis, the moving fortresses keep them warm during the brutal Soviet winters. They begun capturing oil wells as they progress deeper into Soviet territory to keep the diesel engines running. It's not a pleasant experience living for months inside of a Rata, but it is doable. As the winter gives way to spring, the land cruisers move forward and capture more land. By having dozens of Land Cruiser P-1000 Ratas at their disposal, the Nazis have been able to establish footholds in the region that they would have not been able to otherwise. Once a Land Cruiser is deployed and is set up in a defensive position, it's almost impossible to destroy. As Allied forces focus on trying to eliminate these huge deadly targets, the German Air Force and infantry launch counteroffensives. In a worst-case scenario, the Land Cruiser P-1000 Rata would serve as a powerful distraction. With Allied forces tied up trying to destroy these monstrous tanks, the Nazis can devote more forces to secure resources and fuel for their war machine. The Allies are focusing too heavily on trying to build their own gigantic tanks or finding ways to defeat the Nazi land cruisers, and they leave themselves vulnerable. Nazi aircraft and soldiers invade Allied countries while their attention is focused elsewhere. The Nazis now control all of Europe, and World War II ends much differently. This scenario could also go a very different way if Germany started building dozens of Land Cruiser P-1000 Rathas before World War II. The Nazis pour resources into the Land Cruisers only to find they break down constantly and get stuck every few miles. In this case, World War II might have come to a quicker end, as the Nazis would have depleted their resources early on by building completely useless 1,000-ton tanks. There is no denying that if the Nazis had been able to build a Land Cruiser, it would have taken a psychological toll on any Allied soldier who looked upon it. The 1,000-ton tank would have been a terrifying sight to behold. If one of those fortresses was able to move across Europe, the Allies likely would have devoted huge amounts of men and resources to try to stop it. If nothing else, the Rata would be able to cause massive amounts of destruction and fear until Allied forces dealt with it or it broke down under its own weight. There are some historians who believe that the design for the Land Cruiser Rata didn't even make it to Hitler's office. Most think that he asked for a feasibility study for a 1,000-ton tank in 1942, but the design for the Rata is just a fabrication. It could have been a hoax or an engineer's dream tank that he concocted for his own amusement. Currently, there can be arguments made for both sides. Adolf Hitler was a nutjob who most definitely wanted a 1,000-ton tank, 
but it's not clear how far the plans actually got. Edward Grota and the Krupp company built some pretty insane vehicles and weapons. We also know there were a number of other Wunderwaffe that Hitler planned on building once he secured the resources to do so. It seems likely he would have wanted the Land Cruiser P-1000 Rata to be one of them. Right now we can only speculate on how a massive Land Cruiser would have affected the outcome of World War II. Maybe the Rata would have turned the tide of the war back in Germany's favor, or perhaps if the tank was built, it would have caused so much destruction to the roads as it drove across Nazi infrastructure that it would have had to expedite their downfall. Either way, the thought of a thousand-ton tank in the hands of Adolf Hitler is a terrifying one. Now watch Hitler's super weapons that terrified the world. Or check out Hitler's secret weapon, Germany's most dangerous black ops soldier.